You're welcome. Um, come on up. You want to have a, a coffee or a drink or something? You need to put on your thinking cap. You have the presentation to write. Oh, don't remind me. Good night. Are you James Ferguson? Yes, who are you? May I be so bold as to inquire if you are all right? I'm fine, why? Did nothing strange happen to you in the past few minutes? Well, nothing except you. Hey, what do you want? May I come in? Well, not unless you can write a speech. I got a lot of work to do, I'm sorry, but no. Do you have the correct time? It's 11.16, exactly. 11.16, exactly? It must be a mistake. It should have happened by now. I'll tell you what. I'm very busy, and I don't know what you're talking about, so why don't I just go, okay? I'm sorry to have troubled you, Mr. Ferguson. Good night. Right there. Weirdo. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jim Ferguson, and as president of Celebrity Dinners, it gives me the greatest pleasure to welcome you here today and celebrate with us the unveiling of our first ever line of TV star dinner. <laughs> a bit of a pinch here, old man. Something very strange just happened to my plane. You're not kidding. Hurry it along, will you? They'll start to whiz bang us in a moment. Let's move. Thanks for your help. Don't think we've been properly introduced. I'm James Bigglesworth. My friends call me Biggles. Jim Ferguson. Celebrity dinners. I say, you're an American. I heard you chats were coming over. Uniforms on the way, I suppose. 
The Germans have a fix on us. Come on. Wait a minute. This is ridiculous. Hey, what the hell am I doing here? What's going on? I know, I'm sorry, I'm late. What happened to your head? I uh, bumped into your door, it's nothing. Come on, are we ready for the dry run? Well, first I'd like to go over the final cost unit figures with you, and we have a slight problem with our trailers. It's ridiculous, we can't let the buyers see this. Look at that girl's breath. Jim, Jim, we need this cover, huh? It's modern, it's stylish, it's sexy. It's what young America is all about today, huh? Dits and TV. Maybe, Chuck, but it just isn't us. I'll be with you in a second, Debbie. Yeah. Hmm? Looks uh, almost good enough to eat, huh? Looks fantastic. Type these up, would you? And let me have a quick look before they go. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Jim, can I uh, talk to you for a minute? It's an important, Chuck. Hey, now, would I bother you with something that isn't important? What's in your mind? the girl on the package cover. She's part of my campaign for a new product. Starlet Snacks. See, every cover is a photo of a gorgeous gal tastefully posed in provocative positions that we can advertise on the Playboy channel. So what do you think? Munch the Starlet tonight. Can we talk about this in your office, Jim? When are we going to dump that mountain of shit? Look, Chuck's got some good ideas, and as long as his uncle runs the bank who gave us our loan, he's married to us. Just try to get along with him, okay? Look, please try to control Chuck, if only for today. I want everybody there, you know? Okay, but I can't do everything. What do you mean you can't do everything? You're going to have to. Look, Jim, it's the big day. So lighten up, okay? Now, are you sure everything is ready for the launch? Debbie? Just give me a moment with this man. Let me deal with him. Just be a minute, I promise. I see you've hurt your head. Did it happen last night? What is this, 20 questions? Did you knock your head on a burning plane? Now, why did you say that? Did you rescue the pilot? Who the hell are you? Then it did happen last night. You must tell me. It is important you tell me exactly what happened. Commander Raymond. Air intelligence. What, are you investigating me? No, nothing like that. Go on, you must tell me. Okay. I was in my living room trying to write a speech. The next thing I knew, I was in the middle of some big battle somewhere. The Western Front, 1917. How did you know that? Please go on. A plane crashed. It was an old biplane. I helped the pilot get out. You saved him? You saved Biggles? Biggles, that's right. Please continue. Well, there was a lot of shooting and bombing, and the plane blew up. And all of a sudden, I'm back in my room somewhere. This really sounds crazy, I know. What about the camera? Camera? The camera on the aircraft, did Biggles retrieve it? Uh, no, the plane blew up before he could pull it loose. Well, this is very awkward. Listen, Mr. Raymond, or whoever the hell you are, do you mind telling me what's going on here? Uh, 
Jim, uh, we got a glitch in the mashed potatoes. Just a minute, Bill, please. Something else will happen to you. You must come to London. London? Are you crazy? My address is on the card. Good day, Mr. Ferguson. Thanks for coming. Oh, hello, Ferguson. So, uh, is this it? Breaking into the big time, eh? I think we've got the product to do it. You know? We'll see. What are you selling in here? Silicone implants? Oh, you mean the cover, huh? That's market research for you. We're replacing it with a new one. Hmm, not much nose. Consumers want a lot of nose in their dinner. Can certainly work on that. What the hell? Look, let me get you another dinner. No, it's okay. At least somebody wanted to eat it. I'm not so sure about the corn, though. It looks a little bit like, um, dog puke. This is fine. You know your customers will tell you this is the finest dog puke they've ever tasted. <laughs> You again? What the deuce are you doing in my plane? I don't know. You're assigned to the wrong plane. This may be a one-way mission. What do you mean, one way? The Germans have a new weapon. One that caused me to crash. I'm going to try and take another photograph. They may try to use the weapon against us. Make yourself useful. There's a helmet in the cockpit. Biggles, I have to talk to you. Don't talk. Look. Look for what?
working!
Come in. I've been expecting you, Mr. Ferguson. This is my lair, as I call it. It's rather cosy, don't you think? Of course, when they raise the bridge, it gets a bit noisy, but that's not very often. Now, please sit down. I'll get some tea. Uh, forget the tea. Do you mind telling me what the hell's going on here? I've got a business to run. People relying on me. I don't know what the hell you're up to or why. But it has to stop. Do you hear me? I want it to stop. Mr. Ferguson, please don't shout. Why'd you stick me with this? If I had to stick someone with this, as you so eloquently put it, I would not have picked you. Fighting for your country and your life is something you mercifully have never had to do. I swear you're wrong, bud. Last escapade I was on, I was shot at by some black hooded clown in a German biplane. Not Stalin. It had to be. I want some answers. Now. Now, ah, please, Mr. Ferguson. Sit down, there's a good chap, and I'll tell you what I know. Now, the man you met was James Spigglesworth. This is a photograph of him with his team. That's Algy, Bertie, and Ginger. What are these guys, a vaudeville act? Indeed not. They were four of the bravest men it's been my privilege to know. We all owe a great deal of the freedom we now take for granted to men like them. Yeah, so what's this got to do with me? You gave this card to Biggles. How the hell did you get this? Biggles gave it to me. You see, I was his commanding officer on the Western Front. I just gave Biggles that card two nights ago. Do you mean that was 1917? Time travel is not unknown in history. There's evidence that it happens more often than anyone suspects. Yeah, but why me? I don't know the why of it, only that it happens. Well, how come I keep on meeting Biggles, then? No, as to that, I think Biggles is your time twin. Time twin? Listen, you got anything stronger than tea? <laughs> it seems that for the moment your lives are inextricably interwoven. You think maybe the reason has something to do with this? How did you get this? The second time I went back, Biggles and I were on a photo recon mission, and uh, when I returned, I was holding that thing. Did Biggles tell you what the photograph is? Yes, yeah, some sort of secret weapon. Biggles seemed real concerned about it. I'll have this photograph processed. Mr. Ferguson? The time has come for action. What kind of action? I've prepared something for you. What for? Well, your next trip back. This time, we'll send you to the battlefield properly equipped. Listen, is there any way I can get out of this? I'm afraid not. If the enemy has developed a weapon that allows them to break through the Allied lines, then Germany could well win the First World War. History would be altered, and you'll be stuck in 1917, a sort of time orphan, I suppose. And God knows what would happen to the rest of us. This is getting crazier, you know. Oh, you must not fail. I've arranged for you to stay at an hotel just across the river, the Tower Hotel. And I'll have this plate processed and contact you when it's done. Good luck. You'll be in good hands. Because it's a fine officer. No, I, I really don't understand what made him act like that. Psychosis trauma. It says so right here. Diseases of the mind. I've been reading all night, and I found the answer. Psychosis trauma syndrome. But Jim's not crazy. He's scared. It's got something to do with that man who came to see him yesterday. I'm afraid it's some kind of blackmail or... Hello? Jimmy. It's Jim. Where are you? I'm at the Tower Hotel in London. Tell me, what's the news? We're in business. That's great. I'll be home in a few days. 
What's going on? It's personal, honey. I mean, I can handle it. Look, I can be on the next plane. Debbie, listen to me. No way. Absolutely not. I'll be home in a few days. I promise you. Just say hi to the gang for me. You see, guys like Jim, pushy overachievers, they store up stress. And it builds up and builds inside them until they just snap. I'm going to London. I'm going with you. Oh, me too. No, Bill. Somebody's got to stay here and handle the orders. But you don't want to go over there alone. I'll take Chuck. Jim is as good as cured. Keep a tight asshole. More local for the London area. Continuing throughout the night. Motorists are warned of high winds and possible flooding. Excuse me, sir. I didn't see you there. I'll come back later. It was Belgi. Not Belgi, I'm Jim Ferguson. You're an American. You're Bertie, right? Algae? Ginger? Not so good on faces, but monocles I never forget. How did you get here? You wouldn't believe it. Try us. I fell through a hole in time. Oh, you can do better than that. It's the truth. You have three seconds. One, two. Okay. I'm an American secret agent. Where's your identification? You don't want to see it. Come on, you know, we don't carry identification. Why are you wearing a towel? Because I was taking a bath. Release him. What have you done with my photo plate? It's been developed. For now, my orders are to help you guys. Any way I can. We're ten miles behind enemy lines. We're here to meet someone who has information about the German weapon. Could we start by getting me some clothes, please? It's freezing in here. Biggles met back in 1916. Seems she was a German agent. 
and tried to trick Biggles into carrying messages over the lines. She fell in love with him, though, and double-crossed her own side to save his neck. Now both sides want her for the firing squad. Don't worry. Biggles won't be taken in twice. I have a map of some case that lead to Blanchefleur. It was there that they discovered the bodies. Do you know what it is at Blanchefleur? No, nobody has seen it. Only what it does. Here's the map. You can trust me, James. You must believe me. I'm not working for either side any longer. Don't become a nun. Yet. I haven't. Yet. When this is over, I'll come back to you, I promise. You must hurry. Germans everywhere. They've got us trapped. Came from all sides. They must have had the whole place under surveillance. We'd be betrayed. We can't make a scrap of it in here. Not with these people. Limousine. Captain Eric von Stahlheim. The famous Beagles. At last we meet, face to face. Haven't you forgotten your iron mask? I do not need armor to catch a spy. Or perhaps you came to this nunnery to take holy orders. Nothing like that, old chap. I just sing in the choir. Choir practice is cancelled today. Just out of curiosity, how did you know I was here? One of our patrols spotted your plane landing before daybreak. When they told me an English plane had made a night landing and taxied across a narrow bridge, I knew it could only be the great beagles. To the gods of war. To peace. I would rather finish you myself. In the air. The firing squad will not be nearly as enjoyable. But far less likely to botch the job. Rouse! Tell 
will not remove, or you'll be the first to sprout wings. What, Stella? I'm not going to put a bullet in your head, old boy, because that's not the way we do business. and hat for? I told you it was personal. Wow, a transvestite bank robber. That's not even in the book. Now listen, both of you. There's a very good explanation for all of this. I sure hope so. This is Dr. Charles Winthrop Dinsmore in the lobby. Uh, I'm a psychiatrist from New York City. One of my patients is staying with you, and I'm afraid I need a little help with him. If you could arrange an ambulance, I'd be most grateful. He's in room 1231. Oh, and a couple of good, strong attendants, too. Is your patient dangerous? Of course not. No, he's just a little confused. Uh, he's wearing a nun's dress and has a gun. Did you say a gun? Yeah, just a normal big gun. Jim, won't you please tell me what's Okay, going Debbie, on? but I'm telling you, no one ever believes it. I keep falling through this hole in time, going back to 1917. Go on. Do you believe me? Well, if you say so, Jim, I guess I believe. Debbie, I keep going back to World War I, where I'm helping this guy named Biggles find and destroy a German secret weapon. Come on. I'm Dr. Dinsmore. Ah, oh, yes, sir. The, uh, doorman has a puzzle for you. Jim, listen, please. I'm not saying I don't believe you about going back into the past and everything. But will you promise me one thing? What? Will you try to get some help? We are. That's what we're going to Tower Bridge for. Would you cut the bridge story? I mean real help. Psychiatric help. You just said you believed me. Look, I'm sure all of this is very real to you. Oh, shit. Come on, we haven't got much time. You guys don't believe me, Tally! I never even saw him! Only over here helping out, Brandon! Hey, that's him! That's him! Debbie, stay away. You gotta stay away. Good God! Captain Bigglesworth, this is Debbie Stevens. My... a nurse. Shouldn't be here, Miss Stevens. This is no place for a lady. Quickly! Keep moving! Stand in 
told you, I keep going back to 1917. Well, can't we go back? Or forward? Ah! Come on, Ferguson! Come on, Debbie, it's not that bad. It's only World War One. Yo, Biggles, hold on a second here. You mind tell me the plan? We'll go through these caves to Blanche Fleur, the ones Marie gave me the map of. We've got to find out what kind of weapon they have. This is the biggest sense. I think it'll only be a matter of hours before they use it. Celebrity dinners for you. Stay close. Watch out for that. Far. Bertie, come with me. Ginger, you and Algie drop back and cover us. You, you and me, nurse, wait here.
puked? What's that? It's American slang word. It means to uh, overreact. Come on. to see some Eskimos. Let's take a look. Sir. Ceramic tile, like on the space shuttle. What are you talking about? What I'm saying is that these tiles are made to withstand a lot of heat. shouldn't be here. Captain von Stalin. Wo brechen das her? So we're going to be the dummies. Now, I'm an American citizen. You have no right to treat me this way. Doesn't anybody speak English? Please, somebody call the American Embassy. Two of us here are from the United States. I can prove it. I have my passport. Somewhere in here. 
Look, look. I have my passport, my driver's license, my yeah. credit club card. Well, in that case, I also have my mace. Ah! seen enough. Let's go!
You two, stay here until we can get them cleaned out. to you. I was in my plane. The Huns have overrun our trenches. I went up to try and locate the weapon. Well, in Tower Bridge is the man who's got your air photographs.
Because. Have I met you, sir? I'm William Raymond. Captain Raymond. Good God. How oh, I've missed you, old friend. I'm sorry, I... I didn't recognize you. The years have taken their toll. It's the four of us. Bertie, Algie, Ginger and me. Exactly. It was taken when our unit received its first commendation. And I was very proud of all of you. That was only last month. Extraordinary. How did you get here? He materialized, saved my life. I would never have believed it if I hadn't experienced it. So... Apparently, the hole in time goes both ways. It opens when one or the other is in mortal danger. Here's that photograph you need. I developed the photographic plate Ferguson left with me. Now, the weapon is very well camouflaged, but I used computer enhancement to show it in more detail. Computer enhancement? <laughs> Never mind, Ophel. I've marked the position of the weapon for you. Right. Time we were off. There's cops everywhere. Anybody got an idea how we get out of here? How will you get back to the past? I'll find a way. Godspeed to both of you. Genius contraption. What are you doing? You know what, what do you think you're doing? We better get out of here before they see us. Wait a minute. You're not serious again to try to fly this thing, are you? You don't know how. If you can fly a sock with camel, you can fly anything. Stay where you are.
that's the one this thing can do. Go for it. Plane crash. What on earth is this thing? Flying windmill? I'll explain later. Right now I need a dozen Cooper bombs, a Lewis gun, plenty of ammunition, and a bit of luck. Well, at least we can guarantee the bombs and the gun. Ginger, get full battle kits for all of you, machine guns and grenades. We going up in your windmill? Afraid not. I'm going to use it to attack the sound weapon. I want the three of you to go to the convent and protect the civilians. The Hun may want to take reprisals. We'll change their minds from... Let's go. And... Look after Marie for me. Go on, lad! Yes, Come to it! Are you still with me, Ferguson? What do you say? I say, let's kick some ass, old boy. Fertig machen zum Feuern. Microphone! Throw it out onto the speaker! 
I'm gonna fight sound with sound. Sounds crazy. Hang on, old squat. Pick her up. Close to the civilians. Maybe they'll listen to reason. Chaps consider surrendering. Stay down, sister. 
we're not finished yet.
Thanks for your help, Ferguson. I'll take charge of this man. Special air intelligence business. Come with me. Well, did you finish the job? Yeah, we finished it. Good show. Raymond, mm -hmm. did Biggles make it through the war? Oh, yes. Biggles and his team continued to serve their country for many years afterwards. Is he still alive? Sadly, I don't know. The last mission was to the high plateau of New Guinea. So far, no word has been received from him. Uh, just when I was sort of getting to like him, too. Uh, in a rate of some consolation. Look. Will you, Deborah Stevens, have this man, James Ferguson, to be thy wedded husband, to live together according to God's law in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, keeping thee only unto him, so long as ye both do live? I will. The ring, please. You know, you guys wouldn't taste too bad with a little saffron. You guys are in hot water. I was just getting married. It's a hell of a way to start a honeymoon. Hey, Biggles, where are we going? Come on, Ferguson! <laughs> 